We have a 720 meeting with John Knipe, Tree Warden, a report on the Asian Longhorn Beetle Threat. Mr. Knipe, if you'd step forward, I'd appreciate it. Good evening. Good evening. Of your many duties here in the town of Shrewsbury, one of them is the Tree Warden. And, uh, <laughs> And the uh, threat of the Asian longhorn beetle, which has been in the news recently. Yeah, and this has, been, this has been a topic of conversation at tree, annual tree warden meetings for probably 18 years, and the, the devastation it causes if it comes into an area. Um, I hate to see it, but we're, we're going to have to deal with it. Um, first notification we received was on August 13th. Uh, myself and Brad Stone attended the initial briefing sponsored by the city of Worcester. We were also there for the, uh, the, the press release. At this meeting, the town of Shrewsbury was advised that uh, it was not within the regulated area. The line actually ran up the northeast cutoff right along the Shrewsbury line. On August 19th, Mr. Magato and Mr. Hale attended a second briefing. <clears throat> At this time, the Department of Conservation and Recreation and the U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture advised the regulated area had been expanded to include Shrewsbury. Um, information presented the severe nature of the threat and the need to immediate actions to be stopped the spread of the infestation. What they had found them was, I think they had found them over at uh, Great Brook Valley and also at Worcester Country Club, so that automatically moved that line a mile and a half from where it was. Um, on August 19th, Mr. McGuire um, attended this. Um, on August 19th, the resulting from the restrictive water, and to avoid any potential expansion of the threat, the decision was made by Mr. McGuire to shut down the yard, yard waste drop-off uh, program scheduled for August 23rd. The town website was updated with available information starting on the 19th. Uh, since the 19th, the involved communities, Worcester Holden, Boylston, West Boylston, and Shrewsbury, have been in constant contact and communication working directly with DCR and the USDA. Um, since the 19th, we've been working on how best to resolve the yard waste program and how to handle the upcoming curbside collection program. The city of Worcester announced that it will accommodate residents from the surrounding towns that, that reside within the regulated area at the Clark Street facility for wood waste only. On August 20th, uh, letters were sent Mr. Magato to persons involved in the green industry located in Shrewsbury uh, or working in Shrewsbury, advising them the threat caused by the Asian longhorn beetle. The letter was patented after a similar letter sent by City Manager O'Brien. Decisions have been made by all communications each of the involved communities. Over the 19th and 20th, the requests were made from the Department of Environmental Protection relative to the ad waste ban at the Wheeler Breda Millbury Incorporated facility. On August 20th, uh, Mr. LeBeau, Mr. Hale, Mr. Jakes, and Mr. Magato attended the Worcester community meeting. At this meeting, details of the USDA response were outlined. On August 20th, Mr. Hale arranged for the city of Worcester to provide a video of the various public sessions to run, run on Shrewsbury Municipal Cable on Channel 30. On August 20th, Mr. Hale arranged through Sergeant Anderson to make use of, Worc of the, Worcester, you know, the county's 911 um, system to advise residents the ad waste program was being shut down. My former Mr. Capel has placed two message boards into service. Um, since August 20th, we have fielded several calls from residents for uh, beetle sightings. Field visits have taken place. No beetles so far have been found. On August 22nd, Mr. Hale and Mr. Magato attended a meeting of managers of the five communities involved. Additional information was provided by DCR and, and USDA and discussions centered on the nature of the USDA response and what steps must be taken to stop the spread of the, the Asian longhorn beetle. There was extended discussion on how yard and wood waste would area be handled. The matter of yard waste being at uh, Waste Management Incorporated was raised once again. There will be a regular meeting of the, of the managers. On August 22nd, there was a meeting relative to the GIS function. Uh, Mr. McCullen, the engineering department, represented the town of Shrewsbury. Updated maps were sent to all parties to keep the information current. On August 23rd, the staff was present at drop-off location to provide information to those residents that were not reached by a newspaper or a website or 911 and the message boards. I think we had probably somewhere in the city of 40, 50 people pass through there, and I think most, <coughs> most people were very understanding. On, on the 25th, representatives of the USDA visited South Street drop-off location and a compost facility to inspect evidence for ALB. Both areas showed no sign of the Asian longhorn beetle. USDA reviewed with uh, Nancy Allen um, and myself the handling procedures. Other sites visits also took place. Uh, we looked at uh, a couple of wood 
uh, wood cutting businesses just to make sure there was nothing up in the green state area to make sure there was nothing up there. On August 25th, field inspections began in the city of Worcester in the regulated area, located areas of installation to ascertain the perimeter. On August 25th, the resumption of the ad waste drop off program, September 6th, was announced. New rules are now in effective detail to deal with the wood waste from the regulated zone that will be handled at the city of Worcester facility on Clack Street. Uh, I should mention that uh, we, we, my office, along with Michael, are heavily involved with this all last week. John <coughs> was away <coughs> at the uh, Public Works Conference. Uh, he's back, so uh, obviously as Tree Warden, he'll uh, be resuming uh, a lot of these uh, activities. That's the reason why uh, there was such heavy <coughs> involvement of myself and Mr. Hale. Uh, a couple of the highlights, I think, of what's happened since uh, we got first involved uh, with this uh, back on, I think, August 13th. Uh, we've been in very close contact. Uh, the communities have been working very closely together. See, which has been uh, outstanding uh, during this entire process. Uh, USDA have been great, uh, DCR. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we very much appreciate the uh, patience of the public uh, in uh, dealing with the fact that we had to cancel the drop-off cancel uh, the drop -off program this past Saturday. As John mentioned, uh, we're prepared to reopen uh, the program on September 6th. So on September 6th, um, the drop-off program on South Street will be back in business. But it will be in, uh, with some different rules uh, based upon uh, the order uh, that has been issued by DCR relative to how uh, wood wastes are handled from the regulated area. And, and what I have uh, over on the side is a map that's been prepared uh, based upon the regulated area of August 19, uh, 2008. Now, as John said, uh, originally, uh, the very first <coughs> meeting, uh, the regulated area did not uh, come into the town of Shrewsbury. It, it, it was entirely contained uh, within the city of Worcester, the town of Holden, and the town of West Boylston. On the 19th, it was expanded uh, uh, into Holden, uh, West Boylston, Boylston, and Shrewsbury. Boylston and Shrewsbury being new additions uh, to encompass the area in Shrewsbury, uh, north of Route 9, uh, northwest of Maple Avenue, and west of Route 140. Uh, and that's being considered the regula regulated area. <coughs> now, when we open to accept yard waste on September 6th, we'll be able to accept on South Street grass and leaves and green debris from the entire community. We'll be able to handle and process through the South Street location. However, wood products, and wood products being greater than a half inch diameter, from the regulated area cannot be moved from the regulated area to the non-regulated area because that's how the beetle gets spread. The beetle pretty much stays stationary. Uh, its main means of transporting from one location to another is when human beings do that work for them. So we have to impress upon residents of the regulated area not to move wood waste, wood products, firewood and the like from the regulated area into the non-regulated area that's the means of spreading, a uh, primary means of spreading uh, the beetle. For residents in a regulated area that have wood waste they need to dispose of, City of Worcester has made their Clark Street uh, facility available. And the Clark Street facility is uh, open on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And if people go to our website starting tomorrow morning, we've already prepared uh, the update for the website. And uh, probably by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll have all this information up on the website. Uh, the, the beetle, uh, again, um, uh, they have established a regulate, the regulated area. The regulated area is pretty much a mile and a half uh, from the location of the nearest infested tree. They then basically take a, a radius of a mile and a half from that point and create that as the regulated area. Now, they have issued a regulatory order. Uh, the regulatory order that we actually have on our website is the original order. Uh, the current order that we're oper going to be operating under is still being sent to us, and that greatly relaxes. If you read the original uh, regulation, uh, regulatory order, um, they even prohibited the transportation of wood product even within the zone itself. Uh, they have since uh, revised that, and as soon as uh, they can get to us, the current version will be posting that on, on the website. 
Um, as mentioned by John, uh, several of us were able to go to Worcester to attend the community meeting uh, that was put on by the city. Uh, it was an excellent meeting. There, was, uh, there were a few Shrewsbury residents there uh, that also uh, uh, witnessed the program. I don't know if, John, you want to, at this point in time, talk about your comments relative, your observations relative to that meeting. Well, just a few comments uh, about the meeting and about the, uh, the problem itself. I, I think, as we do provide background, and a, and a note that came from, uh, I think it was from the city and from USDA. First of all, people should understand it's not a threat to people, it's not a threat to pets, it doesn't uh, attack or carry any diseases. Uh, this is purely an insect that can have a, a quite devastating impact on trees, but not on uh, animal life. Um, <coughs> Also, I think it's very important that uh, the residents of Shrewsbury who live in the regulated area should make sure that their landscapers who are doing work for them understand what the rules regarding disposal is because uh, as someone in the green industry, I've been contacted by the town of Shrewsbury and by the city of Worcester. I've yet to be contacted by DCR or DAR or any state um, body and there's a as we all know, there's a lot of landscapers out there who may not be um, located, say, through the phone book or through many methods. So there are a lot of uh, people in the green industry out there uh, who may not be aware of the problem. And uh, I think it, we, we, need, we need to call upon our residents to be sure to, if any wood is being transported from their property, that their landscapers understand uh, what the situation is actually um, Mr. McGarrett, we heard at the meeting in, in, that the city was also going to establish a contractor's yard. Has anything happened with that as yet? I, I, I haven't. Uh, I, I believe that was going to be announced today uh, when we met, the managers met on Friday. Uh, city Manager O'Brien uh, told us the location uh, and that uh, he was waiting for some final paperwork to be signed and that they would be announcing the so-called contractor's yard. And, and that's an important fact that people involved in the green industry uh, tree removal and the like that are working within the reg regulated area uh, will have a place to dispose of that material provided to them free of charge uh, by uh, the city uh, slash uh, USDA. Uh, so uh, every effort is being made to notify people and to provide them a legal, uh, safe, uh, inexpensive uh, alternative. And, and that's all designed to avoid people making decisions and depositing material to further spread uh, the, uh, the insect. Uh, and if the area were to expand, then it would be, might be necessary to establish additional locations and part of our discussions on Friday dealt with, with a por small portion of our discussions dealt with that. Uh, you mentioned that you were contacted by both the town of Shrewsbury and the city of Worcester. Uh, the, today, or actually tomorrow morning, we'll be providing to uh, USDA the listing of everyone that we've contacted, because they're, they're going to start the process of uh, basically creating a database of known uh, individuals in the green industry, because they're going to be going out and actually visiting. As, as uh, John mentioned today, uh, part of our discussions when the USDA people were in this morning, uh, they were questioning about, you know, do we know of additional locations in the community? that have been processing a wood waste, which is why they wanted to see South Street, why they wanted to see our, our composting operation. And to further compound it, you get a lot of the tree, <coughs> tree contractors that bring uh, their, their wood chips and to, to landscape companies <coughs> like Bigelow's. Bigelow's takes a bunch of it, and you know these are things that we have to watch out now, for. Now, now, once the tree is cut and it's chipped, as long as the chips are by, two, by at least two dimensions, <coughs> one inch or less, uh, then you know, the insect's been taken care of. So the, the USDA has a very clear protocol on how they're going to handle uh, this entire matter from how the trees are identified, um, how the zones are created, the initial uh, zone of a quarter mile and then up to a half a mile and then the mile and a half um, regulated area. So uh, they, they really have developed a very tried and true procedure on how this situation, how this threat's to be handled. Uh, we're fully integrated with that, uh, not only with the USDA and DCR, but also with the other communities. Uh, we're trying to avoid uh, duplicating things and reinventing the wheel, so to speak, 
which is why, for instance, you notice all our communications look the same, because what's happening is one document's being prepared, and each of the communities are using that same document. Uh, so that uh, <coughs> mapping the same thing, that we're being, uh, any maps that we're going to be using will be provided by uh, USDA, DCR, because they want the public to receive, in, to, regardless of the community you happen to live in, same information. And also, just on the note on the trees, <coughs> it doesn't affect all trees. There are certain trees that will be host trees. Um, that listing, I think, is probably on the website also. But uh, we planted for 30 years no way maples, which is the biggest, what they like the most. So <coughs> if it hits a few of the trees, it's going to be some massive clearings throughout Shrewsbury, Worcester, and Holden, and the other communities. Mr. Chairman, um, as both Mr. Magado and Mr. Knipes have mentioned, the website, uh, the material that's posted on the website is, is excellent if people want to learn more about this. There are several, uh, there's like a PowerPoint presentation, uh, lots of excellent photographs of uh, what people should be looking for. Interestingly, this insect likes to be up in the top of a tree, in the top third or half. So very little activity down low. Um, probably the easiest uh, thing for people to see are perfectly round holes about the size of a dime. Uh, that's when the, when the insect exits the tree. Evidently, it manages to eat. I mean, a perfectly round hole is made. Um, and uh, I just encourage people to, to look at the website because there's a great deal of material that ex explains how the insect got to the United States, how it's transported, what its life cycle is, and, and uh, what the uh, ramifications are. Um, unfortunately, we're the fourth occurrence in the entire United States. Uh, I guess fortunately, we're not the first occurrence in the United States, because the USDA has a very uh, uh, professional, well-managed, uh, well-conceived plan to uh, eliminate this problem, and they feel they've eradicated it in the other three, and they expect to do the same here. But it is a, a, a lengthy process. We could be talking at least <coughs> seven, seven years out between uh, tree removals and monitoring. Other questions from members of the board? Ms. Miller? How, at the South Street facility, how will you monitor that the residents within that area aren't just, you know, well, distributing effective on the sixth, we're going to have three staff members. Now there's going to be one checking, um, one checking registrations and licenses coming in to see where the people are from. Um, there'll be another people directing people where to go, and there's going to be somebody else watching what's being dumped. And, and, and likewise for the Worcester facility, Worcester they'll be checking. Worcester, Worcester, Worcester yes, doing the same I'm thing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Right. Again, it's very you know it's it's, I mean, not, it's unusual for us to do this, obviously, but uh, it's important that. You know, we, we make every reasonable effort to make sure that the insect doesn't spread. And um, it's not going to, it's not going to get there on its own. It's going <coughs> to get there because it gets there because people bring it there. And uh, so we need to be very, very careful about that. And we, we're hoping that over the next two weeks, uh, since the next uh, period will be open, it will be September 6th, that by getting the word out, uh, we're finding that uh, if you inform residents of what the, what's required, what the expectations are, uh, we're at 99% people coming in the, the gate will all be taken care of. You know, people need to, you know, again, if it's, if it's green, it's clean, um, you know, from all the community. You can bring in the South Street, it's grass <coughs> clippings, hedge clippings, you know, evergreens, that kind of thing. But if it's a wood waste from the regulated area, greater than a half inch in diameter, you're going to have to take it to um, the, the Clock Street facility. Now, people need to also be watching the website because that map may change. Okay, that map changed from August 13th to August 19th, and it may change again. So as we get closer to September 6th, obviously we'll be updating the information, putting up on the website maps and, and the like. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that people stay informed. Well, thank you. Just like I said, I think you've done an excellent job at the communication to date. And you know, I mean, we've really got the word out, and I think we've got it out to a majority of the community. So, thank you. Other questions, Mr. DePaul? Uh, we haven't really talked about. Um, I know we talked about how serious it is, but uh, we know obviously that um, the agencies are going to try to use the most limited way to control this as possible. But maybe to stress how important this is, you could talk a little bit of what the extreme steps would be if this can't be controlled. 
um, because it is, it's serious. And I, I know we're not talking about going there yet, but I think people, um, it would be helpful to people to know if it does spread and it's not taken seriously now, how serious it could get. My understanding of what's going to happen is they find a host tree, everything within a quarter mile that is a possible host will have to be cut and removed. And the quarter mile to a half mile, they will be doing um, root, root uh, injections or tree injections with a herbicide, I think is Merit is one of the trade names they use. Um, and I don't know how that's going to play into effect with the aquifers we have in town either. So, but it, Is it everything or is it just the trees that would be affected? Host trees. Host trees. But that's still pretty devastating. Yes, it is. So it, it's, it's serious. It's, it's right? maples. Maples are a big, big community tree. This is probably the biggest part of it. If you're talking trees with years and years of growth. It'd be just it's have fine. to be completely cut down. And I think if everybody read the article Sunday in the paper, it showed you a picture in, in uh, New, one of the towns in New Jersey. There weren't <coughs> many trees left, and people that had large shade trees now had three inch caliper trees that they may never see reach any maturity. You know, as far as it takes 20, 30 years to get a tree that's halfway decent. Thank you. Uh, questions from members of the board, Mr. Tartaglia. I got a couple, uh, John. Um, if you have to cut down, you know, 35 maple trees, who pays the cost of that? Is that by the property owners or? Right now, I understand it's the federal government. The federal government. We're, we're not going to do any of the cutting. Uh, the federal government uh, will, will uh, handle that. Uh, they'll be signing up contractors uh, to do that work and. Both the cutting of trees and the uh, application of the insecticide is all done on the USDA jurisdiction authority, their expense. Uh, individual property owners would, will not see any of that expense borne by themselves. So, and the treatment is systemic, putting the chemicals in it and it goes up and it goes up into the back and goes up to the bark into the tree. But, but again, I think we need to stress uh, right currently, the town of Shrewsbury is only involved at the present time as being a part of the regulated area, uh, which means that no ALB in Shrewsbury, which means that as long as we maintain vigilance about not getting that regulated area expanded, mm -hmm. uh, we will not have to deal with any of these issues of cutting and, and the like. There was one other thing. Um, I think it was Japanese beetles. Um, where there's a, I think it's called milky spore that you put in the ground and it, it makes it so the, the beetle can't reproduce in the if it's like 12 years or something. Uh, is there anything like that in the works for these, these no. beetles? No. I don't think there's any known chemical that works on them, uh, no. any known predators to them. There's no known predator is what I understood, right? Uh, at the present time, no. Thank you. Uh, any, uh, I, I have a question for, for John, which is um, I'm trying to identify where the Asian Longhorn beetle is around or not? Do you have spotters in the area? Do, I mean, how, how are you trying to determine if, if we've been following up on complaints? I know Mike and I went out to uh, uh, House on Mercury Drive, and you know, not sure on that one. Uh, we passed it on to the state. Uh, if they report it to the, uh, the there's a uh, on the website. There's a place they can actually report it, and that goes to a listing with DCR, and they're passing it on to the federal government. Those all those complaints will be followed up on, unless we see something actually obvious, and we can we can make a phone call. But I haven't seen anything, you know, actually, I haven't seen a, an exit hole. And I've, I've only seen wood shavings at this gentleman's house today. And to me, it may have been, might have been carpenter ranch. I don't know. Well, again, as people call in, we go out. I've been out on a couple of visits, We're sending people out uh, to sort of resonate, <coughs> you know, get some, un <coughs> some reply, because there's a lot of concern about uh, getting put in a queue and no one ever getting out there. Uh, we, we, we've got excellent contacts with the USDA, uh, we have email addresses, direct access, uh, and, and we're able to feed this information in. But people can make their own self-reporting. If they go to the website, there's a couple of telephone numbers there, and there's also an actual website uh, that you can click on, fill out the form on, uh, on the website, submit the form, and there's someone actually pulling this information off the forms and is setting up some sort of triage system. Uh, in order to, as they ramp up for this thing, in order to see, obviously they want to get out and not only uh, look at <coughs> the stations, but they also want to be searching the, uh, the region, the area, I should say, to try to establish a perimeter, perimeter rather, because uh, that, that'll give them a sense of just how big the situation is. So again, they, uh, they've only been in, uh, actually today, uh, they were doing some training last week, they're actually out in the field today and 
some degree of full force from what no, we were told on Friday. And they'll actually be laying out a grid from where they start right out through the outskirts to, to, to actually map out where, the, where they find the beetles and what has to be done. Um, my understanding is a lot of the climbers won't show up until the leaves are off the trees. So in October and November, you may see a lot of climbers <coughs> come in to, to actually get up into the trees and see what, see visually um, where the problems are. Because like I said, most of, most of it seems to be up high in the trees and not visible from the, the ground. The, the city manager has been very, very proactive on this uh, situation. And he told us on Friday, in fact, the telegram has been very, um, very receptive and helping out and very supportive. And apparently they're actually going to be featuring either a page in the newspaper, some portion, uh, to sort of give people almost on a daily basis updates as to what, you know, what, what uh, area of the community they're surveying and almost on a day-to-day -day, uh, update uh, because they, they feel that by engaging the public in this process, it'll speed along uh, the entire uh, process of addressing the threat. So if a resident or a group of residents want to volunteer as spotters or something like that, is that something that... that we currently uh, don't recommend. have any information on that, but I can take the question and we can raise the question at our next meeting. All right. Mr. Chairman? We don't want people climbing trees. Yeah, I, I mean, that was, that, was my, that was my next point, John, which Somebody was, uh, you know, if there was some interest in, in having some residents help you out, I wonder how much true help it would be if, if really the, the determination as to whether these things exist or not is, is high up in the trees, which would take a climber, obviously, and that's not something that the average resident would be able to do. Mr. Lebeau. Well, first of all, uh, Mr. Magato, have has it been established with USDA about the area in which they're going to start their inspections? Do we expect to see any uh, more than a quarter of a mile away from an affected tree? Actually, do we expect to see any in Shrewsbury in the with the map the way it is? Uh, people from the USDA? Yes, they're in, they're in town today. I mean, go expe in, expect inspecting residences? Uh, they, they may go out and inspect residences today, so, depending on the nature of the calls they're getting. Certainly. So then I just think it's important <coughs> that we point out a couple other things that we heard at that meeting in Worcester, that uh, representatives of USDA will be very well credentialed. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, We've heard that in other communities there are people who take advantage of this situation. So no one in Shrewsbury should, you know, someone knocks on their door and says that they can inoculate their trees or, uh, you know, evaluate their property or anything for a fee. Don't do it. Um, and USDA, I guess they're going to have a uniform or certain shirts they're going to wear. They're also going to have some kind of identification. So. Uh, just be, be mindful of that because uh, evidently in other areas there were individuals who uh, were scam artists who would uh, uh, you know get people to pay them money to do absolutely nothing. It's a good point. Thank you. Um, I know that the, the, this process from the very beginning has been one of, of education and notification uh, for the residents you know in the affected areas. I know that um, you know, you've gone to great lengths to try to mitigate this as, as best as, as you can. Um, how much disruption did you have over the weekend at the at the um, uh, South Street as far as the garage went? I understand from reports that people were very understanding, that, that, that yeah. you know, the residents were very accepting as to what's going on, but I just wondered how many it affects and, and uh, what measures you're going to take going forward. You're going to be checking IDs and things like that as far as making sure that they're Residents, are you going to be inspecting bags? To what level, you know, are we going to go to? Well, I, I think we're going to take uh, appropriate uh, action. Um, we have a we have until the sixth to work out any our own our protocols. Everything before we do anything, we're, we're running it through USDA. We have that kind of access to them, uh, even to the point of letters that we prepared. We send off to them, and they look at and send them back. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll, our people will be prepared, they'll be trained, and we'll handle it uh, in an appropriate fashion. Uh, certainly, uh, we'll be looking at how the city of Worcester handles these kinds of situations. You know, they have a lot more experience with this currently, and we'll come up to speed uh, very, very quickly. We don't have too many more drop-offs and everything goes to curbside. I That's think. right. The, the, the big thing right now is, uh, is how uh, we're going to handle the curbside program, and that, that's my current dilemma right at the moment, trying to figure that one out. We'll have it figured out. Pretty quickly. Okay, good. Um, Mr. Chairman, Any other questions, Mr. Yeah, Another quick one to Mr. Knipe or Mr. LeBeau, both tree experts here. Um, we just had an occasion on our street to have some large trees taken down, and these are qualified climbers that go up there. Is there like a, 
Canaveras Association, uh, you know, they're up in these trees anyway up the top that uh, we could maybe tap into for information? Well, there is a Mass Arborist Association, and I'm sure. Mass Tree Wardens. I mean, yeah. I'm sure anyone, there's a lot of people walking around now either looking up in trees <laughs> or mm. professionals who are doing work in trees are slowly but surely being educated on what to look for. Okay. Thank you. As far as the city, the city had some of their own personnel trained. Uh, they're bringing in federal uh, people. They're bringing in state cities also. Had some of their people trained. I suspect that we'll be getting some training by some of our people. Uh, again, this will ramp up, and we're going to really rely on on the USDA because they've been around the horn on this on a couple of times. Uh, they're, they're very confident. They seem extremely confident. Uh, and they're uh, very, very uh, concerned. You know, the, the, the concern that they expressed from the initial meeting you have with them of the need to get on top of this right from the very, very beginning to really drive that point home very clearly. We've been reacting to that and trying to get up to speed ourselves as quickly as we can. Is there, uh, my last question is, is there any, are we eligible in any way for any reimbursement and or grant money to be able to deal with this, the local effort that we're putting forth to try to deal with this? Is there anything that's available that you're aware of? Currently, uh, currently no, uh, but we've had some, uh, the, the meeting on the, uh, my dates are starting to run together already, the 19th, <laughs> There were also members of the legislative delegation at that <coughs> meeting, and the question of funding came up. So the legislative delegation is well aware of what this is happening, how it's going to be impacting individual communities. Right now, our primary expense has been staff time. We really haven't expended any right. in printing and, and that kind of thing. Um, if we start getting to some actual incurred expenses, uh, then we're going to have to consider how we're going to fund that. So it may be a situation where we may have to uh, see, the, see the finance committee for reserve fund transfer if we have to get in some actual expenditures of funds uh, and then seek reimbursement at a later date. I'm, I suspect that kind of discussion will probably develop over the next several several weeks once uh, we start getting a sense of the nature of the of the threat. Yeah, I know Nancy talked about even with the fall collections uh, down at the landfill trying to get the website with the <laughs> machine to process, right. process the material down fine, you know, every in between every other pickup, so that we that's don't right. have generate a lot of material that right. hasn't been at least taken care right. of. That's one. Of, that's one of the process. And that's going to cost. Uh, that's some costs associated with that. Right. That was one of the process issues that the USDA went over with us today. Well, I know that the effort so far has been really based in containment and trying to mitigate this the best that we can. I appreciate your efforts so far and the education that you provided to everybody. I'm glad that this isn't a public health issue, but it is a serious issue as far as trying to maintain our trees in town and, and uh, trying to put um, safe uh, procedures in place in order to preserve the trees that we have here in town. Is there any other questions from members of the board? Mr. Chair, just one. Briefly. If no beetle is found through these efforts in Shrewsbury, how long do we remain in the regulated area? Until they um, achieve eradication. So that could be up to several is years. It seven yeah. or eight years. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's found. Okay, uh, it takes them three three years to eradicate, and then they monitor for four years, mm -hmm. three to four years. So at a minimum, that. this area stays in the regulated. Uh, as they explained it to me, uh, you, you should not expect to see the regulated area get any smaller, yeah. but it may get larger. Right. Okay, thank you. But again, you know, if if they after they do their initial survey, uh, they'll they're going to recalibrate and they'll tell us what mm -hmm. the deal is at that time. I think the important thing everyone to remember is it's a very serious threat, right. uh, that we're on top of it, uh, and that we're getting complete and total cooperation and access with both the federal state uh, and with the city of Worcester. You know, the city of Worcester, the city manager was very gracious uh, to make available the Clark Street location uh, to not only the town of Shrewsbury, but also for those residents in the regulated area of Holden, Boylston, and West Boylston. Because everyone realizes very quickly that this isn't, this isn't a city or town issue. Uh, this is an issue for the region. Uh, to deal with. Any other questions from members of the board? Thank you very much, Mr. Knight, for coming oh, before we, us. We have a big finish. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. have a beat him? Why don't you do the finish? Uh, the conclusions. To date, there is no confirmation of the ancient longhorn beetle in Shrewsbury. The USDA is working with the Department of Conservation and Recreation, a high, highly expert in handling this matter, has made, made it clear that this issue will be getting it in its highest attention. The City of Worcester has also 
made it clear that it will assist in any possible way. Uh, residents are advised that there is no reason to seek private tree treatments to protect trees against Asian longhorn beetles. The Massachusetts ALB Cooperative Eradication Program will treat ALB host trees with, with the specified brand of regulated uh, area with a specific, specially formulated and measured treatment process that, that no charge to homeowners. There will be an over, no over-the-counter treatments formulated especially for the Asian longhorn beetle. I think that goes with John's point, okay? If someone knocks on your door and says they've got a way to inoculate your trees mm -hmm. for a price, you should send them away. Okay, the only people that will be doing that uh, will be USDA contractors operating under the USDA label. Uh, no private uh, activity of this type uh, will be taking place. <clears throat> okay, uh, residents must be uh, vigilant and call reports to the federal ALB office located at Skyline Drive at 508-799-8330. At they also can call Massachusetts Pet Alert hotline at 617-626-1779. Our reports may also be submitted over the web at uh, www.massnrc.org slash pests. Uh, ALB report ASPX. Yeah. It'll be on our website. <laughs> <laughs> be the easiest way to get to it. Just link right uh, the best source of information will be the town's <laughs> website, www.shrewsburymass.gov. Uh, questions uh, may be directed to Daniel Magato at 841-8508, or they can call me at 508-841-8513. Uh, residents must be careful not to spread the infestation, which requires strict adherence to the regulatory order issued by DCR. Care must be taken not to move wood, wood waste or wood products from within the regulated to the outside of the regulated area. A Shrewsbury community meeting will be held in the event there is a confirmation of ALB in Shrewsbury or the regulated area is expanded further. Um, the Yard Waste Drop-Off Program will resume on September 6th. Wood waste a half inch or greater from address, addresses within the regulated area will not be accepted and may be disposed of off the of City of Worcester's location on Clark Street. Addresses will be checked at the gate. Um, there will be staff inspecting bags. Uh, full, full details of the program can be viewed again on the Shrewsbury website at www.shrewsbury/mass.gov. Uh, the curbside program will be planned on the week of October 20th through 24th. Plans are being finalized as to how yard waste collected within the regulator will be handled. Any other questions from members of the board? <laughs> Again, thank you very much for coming before us and educating okay. us. And like I said, I, I know I've got a dozen complaints I get on emails last over the last week when I was away. I've got to check out in the next few days. So I think things will be a little busy. Was there something that we didn't handle that you? There were two questions. I'm allowed to just ask um, that I didn't hear discussed in this or seen in the literature previously. Um, I guess first is the you know the effort and the seriousness of this nature. I agree has been handled very well and the communication has been tremendous. Uh, so thank you for that. I would just ask in terms of what has been articulated around the yard waste program at the drop off center for the sixth is great news for those of us with small backyards. Um, what, I, what I'm curious, is there any ability to consider a change in the hours, given that today, before this crisis, the 1130 bell rings with long lines of traffic still trying to beat the end of the time. I imagine license checks, registrations, I can imagine much longer wait times for what is a drop-off <laughs> turning into a, a stay, um, not to mention traffic snarls out on South Street that are already sometimes very lengthy at that end of the bell. I know Clark Street has you know, Saturday all day and or Wednesdays. If there's been any consideration to that, um, if there could be, it might be, you know, it's, it's gonna be hard to imagine everything getting done in those small number of hours. So I was curious if we've given consideration or could we to extend. Yeah, I, you know. I, I think that's a good suggestion. We should probably do that. Well, that's a great That'd be idea. great if you can consider it. It might just <coughs> yeah. help some real traffic issues and other things right. where people are struggling, you know, with all right. the changes. No, I think it's a good idea. I think we can do that. The other one is, just in general, obviously the seriousness of the nature has been uh, very well articulated, but for, I heard you speak of wood waste in regulated areas, but those folks who actually have wood businesses, wood cutting particularly, I can think of one or two that fall within the regulated areas. 
Are there special provisions or inspections or things that will allow them to conduct their business or homeowners who might buy wood from such folks that we as a region don't inadvertently spread this beyond which nobody would want to? I mean, but those folks still need to make a living. You know, are there things that you got stockpiles of cordwood sitting there? You really don't know the source of where it was over the last 18, 24 months while it's seasoned. Those beetles apparently, if they can travel in pallets, they can travel in stock wood piles. So are there provisions around that? I didn't hear that spoken to. Obviously, we were talking about waste, but not wood cutting or wood business. Yes. Uh, what's part of the reason why the USDA wants the list of the green industries is uh, they, they need to visit all these locations and talk with each of the proprietors on, the, on that kind of issue okay. uh, in order to create a, a system of you know, how to handle each person's individual issue. Because they know that if they don't come up with a way of addressing it, people are going to be forced to doing things that may not be entirely appropriate. So that's part of the process that we're going to start in dealing. Um, each of the communities are going to have to deal with the business people in their community uh, to try to come up with these types of, of, uh, of, of solutions. Because okay. we're, we're into this not for just this season, but it could be for several several seasons. And particularly this season with oil that will be there <coughs> throughout trying to you know, get wood today. Um, so as a homeowner, I guess I'm understanding there's really nothing we should worry about about where we're purchasing wood products, you know, firewood per se, length, full of four foot length, split and whatever, uh, from any of those businesses no matter what. Um, that That's in process that those businesses have been addressed as a green industry so we should be free to take a load tomorrow next week with the assumption that we don't really have to worry other than commonsensically um, looking at wood product and right, so it no. doesn't land up in the other industry is great because you bought a quarter of wood from somebody who's in the regulated area selling wood products they cut in the last right. Right. anybody within the regulated area right now no, cannot right, right, out of the right now that program isn't established so you should not accept the delivery Okay, so those folks might be out of business until these, okay. Well, you going to find customers within the regulated area to deliver to. Okay. Yeah, as of, you know, what I described to you is something that will transpire over the next uh, several weeks. Okay. But, uh, which is, which is again, why a city manager last week sent out the letter and then I mimicked his letter because we wanted to get the word out to these people as soon as possible in order to start to make these arrangements so that people aren't put into a bad situation. Right. Okay. And the other problem is you get a lot of larger woodcutters, they actually ship to the Cape. Yeah, I mean, it goes everywhere. So it goes right? everywhere. So it is a Worcester regional so issue. So it's going to be a problem. I understand some heavy fines, too, if you get caught moving with outside the regulated area with, with the product. Okay. And, and people that are in that business should contact uh, the USDA. I mean, if they haven't already been gotten that information. Okay, but you're asking homeowners to be at least cognizant of mm -hmm. where they're buying it from. Ab absolutely and correct. Pay attention to these regulated areas. Don't purchase from within. Absolutely correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Those are good questions. If you could um, tell you, us gentlemen. what your name and address is for the meeting notes, that would be helpful. <coughs> it's Jamie King, 6 Ryan Road. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, John, for that presentation.